So the method that I'm going to share with you today, I'm going to call in the groove method. So I basically take a router and I'm going to groove a line into my face board anywhere that two fabrics are going to meet. And that's really the key to my whole entire method. It's just getting in the groove. I'm going to mark the outline of my cornice onto the plywood so I can cut it down to the exact size that I need for my window. I'm going to go ahead and draw my two and a half inch banding mark so I know that that's where I'm going to make my route line. This is a compact router and this is kind of my key to what I do and this is what I love. It has a one quarter inch bit. I'm just going to follow my Sharpie marker. This is a half inch thick plywood so my groove is going to be measured at a quarter inch deep and it's a quarter inch wide which you'll figure out is perfect for the size of a wall cord. This is actually the face of the, the cornice. Now I'm actually going to flip it over to the back because I have a trick about on the back side of the cornice and I'm going to route another line. This one I needed to wait until after the, the bottom edge was cut because I'm going to route a line one inch up from the bottom edge. So I need to measure up one inch. And I have a tool and a tip that I got from Ann Davis, another workroom in our industry. You can get these at Sailrite. There's a lip on here and you're going to put that lip and you're going to put your marker in one of the holes that marks it one inch and you're just going to draw. Now I'm going to route on the back side and you'll see the purpose for this a little bit later. And this is for the banding at the bottom on the face because we have to make sure that our welt cord is going to wrap around the side of the legs. As a safety feature, I have learned that your hand should go in front of the router because the router will kick back. If it kicks back, it could cut your fingers off. Oh, that's a very good point. Build the cornice. I start with taking my dust cover and my face board. I'm actually going to set them upside down on my table and then I'm going to clamp the dust cover up underneath it. And now to add the legs. And you need to remember to place the groove on the outside. That's an easy one to miss. There's a little chunk of wood that didn't get routed out, and I would have normally done this earlier, but I, it's not a problem to go ahead and go back now. For actually padding the cornice, I always use rolly cornice board padding, and I'm going to use the rolly spray adhesive. And when I'm spraying my spray adhesive on, I don't want any to go down in the route line. is I need to be able to get to it to staple it so I'm just going to take and cut a groove with my scissors of where that line is. And this is the probably the most time consuming part of the whole process because I'm going to cut that quarter inch out so I am going to go down both sides of that route line. You just want that slit enough to where you can staple your fabrics down in that groove. This is the fabric that I chose for the body of the cornice. When I'm placing the fabric I do want to make sure that I've got enough to go onto the return and then wrap around up underside the legs. Now I can just switch back to my stapler. Since I've got this route line on here, I want to make sure that I'm using 
three eighths inch staples. I don't want to go any longer than that because otherwise they're going to come through on the back side. Now as I'm wrapping my fabric around to the back, I can just feel for the underside of the leg and I'm just going to staple up against it. And then I'm going to go on that route line down the side of the leg. below the groove but I'm going to leave a little bit of extra here just so I have it for when I wrap the inside of my leg. So I'm just going to basically bring this line straight down and cut up to that point, up to the groove, and then follow my staples. by making sure I've got enough and I'm going to lay my fabric straight across because my fabric is not going to bend at the angle of my groove. It's going to stay straight. Okay, just start stapling it right in that groove. very helpful on getting in the groove with all of these staples, but it's really necessary in here and you can hide those staples very well. here is now I can just take my hot glue gun and just go right down in that groove 
and then my gimp is going to follow that route line and I don't have to worry about making sure it's lined up, making sure it's even or not wavy. It's just going to follow the line. So to start the welt cord, we're gonna, I'm going to have Zona stitch about an inch, inch and a half from the edge and start there because otherwise when I get it onto the cornice, I'm going to need to open it up and peel it back. Next, all I need to do is trim off the excess. I just need to trim it close to the stitching line. It doesn't have to be super close, but the idea is to bury that excess fabric down into the route line. This welt cord is gonna go right up here. It is not going to bend around to the back side of the cornice, only the fabric is. So I'm just gonna hold that in place, feeling where the edge of that welt cord is, and kind of tuck my raw edges up underneath and shoot a couple of staples. And then it's simply a matter of hot gluing this down and going all the way around to the other end, just like I did the gimp. And as I go, if I have any of these little threads that are sticking out, I can also take a pin or something sharp and just tuck them into that hot glue and they'll stay put. get down to this edge, I'm going to stop gluing for a minute. I'm going to measure where this would go. I'm going to cut it a little ways past the back of my leg. And then I'm going to peel open the stitching that Zona put in. So what I want to do is I'm going to peel this back and I'm going to trim my welt cord at the back of the leg. 